Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminars. This is Session 1, The Basics, Part 8, View Duplication, Section Box, Camera Setup and Rendering. OK, so back to the Revit environment. Previous video, we made a dormer window. OK, so we're going to look at duplicating views. We've currently got a 3D view open and that 3D view has various settings associated with it within the properties. Um, if you're from an AutoCAD background you'll be familiar with um, using layers as a way of filtering information. Now Revit doesn't have a layering system to filter information. What you do is you create duplicate views of the cameras or set up a variety of different camera views and you can filter the information that you can see with that camera. So. I prefer to leave the 3D view unaltered, um, the original one, and leave myself that without any alteration to it. Um, I can take a duplicate of it by right clicking where it says 3D and say duplicate view. We haven't got any detailing for now, so just hit duplicate. And I get a copy of the view. There's no difference at the moment to it, but what I can do is start applying some filters to this view to change what I can see. Um, a very simple example in this view would be if I would like a view of this building with the roof um, hidden so I can see into the building um, within my copied view I can make that change quite simply I can go to view go to visibility graphics or VG is the shortcut uh, it's a useful shortcut to remember because you do use this quite often in here this gives us a list of all of the categories of objects within Revit and you can hide categories by unticking them in here. So let's go down, it's alphabetized so roofs are down here, untick that and hit apply and OK. So that hides all roofing elements within my model so you can see it's taken my dormer roof off as well as my main roof. OK so I could go back into visibility graphics to turn that roof back on because I don't really want to hide the roof yet but a quick way to get that roof back is to click on this light bulb down here on the bottom row that says reveal hidden elements the environment turns pink and what is pink is whatever is hidden in my model so that allows me to right click on the uh, one of the roofs and say unhide view unhide in view category because it was the category that we hid not the element so that's that done I can close that down and my roof is back okay one of the um, working methodologies I like to use is down in the properties there is this thing called a section box and I find it very useful and we'll have a look what that is. So best practice would be to give my 3D view a useful name. I can right click on that 3D view, rename it and call it 3D section box just for my own reference. Um, naming and naming conventions might be something that you have in your office um, but I find if I just leave it a sensible name um, I know where I'm going and other people would too. OK, so now I have named it. Turning on section box, I get this graphic here, which is a box around the extents of my model. Now, what that is saying is anything outside of that box is invisible in this view. I can select that box. And if I'm careful, you need to be relatively careful here. I hover the cursor over until I see the word control, then I click and drag and I can pull down my section box and start cutting into the view of my building. So I'm not deleting the building, I'm just hiding it. So you can start getting visible access into some of the things that would be otherwise hidden. Okay. So if I want to make a change within the model now, I could, for instance, um, select all of my ceiling elements. If I right click, 
and say select all instances now this is the difference between visible in view and an entire project if I want to select all the um, ceiling elements within the entire project I can click on that and that selects all of the objects okay I don't want to select my ceilings but I have spotted an issue with how my ground floor walls and my floor interact uh, the the walls are up and through the floor so if yours is similar to mine a quick way to fix this we used this tool before so right click on one of the walls and say select all instances in entire project so I'm selecting all of my internal ground floor walls we used this tool before attach top and base we used it when we were making the um, the roof but we can use it again to attach all of these walls to the floor and you can see I've now associated the walls with the bottom of the floor rather than the top so you can see you can work within this section box environment quite quickly um, I quite often have a variety of section box views set up uh, maybe ground floor first floor second floor that kind of thing okay so that is duplicating a 3d view you can also duplicate a 2d view so one of the floor plans a floor plan is a view the same as a 3d view is it's just looking downwards at a section and a height now let's make a duplicate of our level 0 floor again best practice is to leave the original unaltered duplicate view and just duplicate we haven't got any detailing for now however we can start adding some detailing to this copy so let's rename it by right clicking on it and say level 0 detailing or yes detailing that's fine for the purposes of this so what's detailing if we go to the annotate tab there's a variety of things and we'll look at um, this in more detail later on to do with room tagging etc um, but something quite sim simple might be selecting a linear dimension type grabbing the end of that and grabbing the end there and dropping it off so using dimensions is quite straightforward you select sorry I should have been using my aligned dimension tool there not my linear dimension tool now this is a thing my aligned dimension tool is wanting to find the wall center line wall faces is what I need for this purpose so you can see that you can select objects quite simply now these things should be bound together and they should stretch as I move and change where my walls are I can drag them around by just clicking and dragging with the left mouse button so you can see that I can make changes and modify things quite easily here and the dimensions stay associated um, I could put some text on here just going to randomly type some text so if I was to put this on a plan these this detailing elements would show up okay if I want to do a duplicate of this level 0 again now this is just for demonstration purposes you don't really need to do this I'm right clicking go duplicate view with detailing and it will take that detailing with if I was to do it again duplicate view just simply I don't get the detailing so you see I'm going to delete those two things I've just done there those just for purposes so that's what detailing and duplicating with detailing is all about okay so um, that's that covered basically we're going to go into that in more detail at a later date okay so um, we're going to add some cameras in now so this is quite a simple concept cameras are to be found in the view tab 
3D, if you drop down where it says 3D view, you get default 3D view, which is the one we've been using already, and that's an orthogonal view. And the difference between a camera view and a 3D view, uh, an orthogonal view is you can work quite freely within a 3D orthogonal view. Because if you set up a camera view, it's a perspective view, and you can select things within the view, but you can't really make a lot of changes. So we're going to use that though. So at the moment we're on level zero. Click on camera, and you can see the first thing is it's a perspective. And it's offset at 1.75 meters above level zero. So that's where I'm placing my camera. Um, you can see down on the command line, click to place the eye position of the cursor location. So 1.75 is the eye the eye height of a six foot tall person. Um, so, or there, there and thereabouts, and it's quite a nice place to start. So I'm going to get a 3D view of the front of the building where the doors and the windows are. So you can see the r the view width and the distance the second click is where the target of the camera is going to look at and um, that's usually relatively arbitrary um, and you can just land it wherever you like. I could land it there and I'd get the same as that really. 